there and welcome back. It's Lisa from Critters and Ink Designs in Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to be <clears throat> using uh, doing the new April Paper Pumpkin. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video. In fact, it's been a while since I've done any stamping at all. I've been helping out a friend who just had surgery and I've been working in her salon um, as an esthetician. And I've been retired from aesthetics for about 20 years so it's been a bit of a challenge physically uh but i've thoroughly enjoyed it the people are lovely and um but here it is uh monday and i'm not working today so i thought well i need to get back into stamping and doing something stamping up ish so i thought well i'm gonna dig out my april paper pumpkin it came the other day and i hadn't even opened it so i've just opened it i'm gonna switch down to my desk there we are and uh, here it is so this one is called uh, all the little things yeah all the little things and this month's stabbing spot is shaded spruce and this is one of the colors that's carrying over when the new catalog comes out and um, I keep my little stamping spots for gifts and things so I'm going I've dug out my big ink pad I'm going to be using that and in each paper pumpkin, you get a preview of next month's paper pumpkin. And so next month's is called uh, Exploring in Color. And they've done the, the box in black and white because it's the new in colors that are going to be released on May 2nd. So when you get your actual box, it's going to have color uh, on the box. It's not going to be black and white like this. And there is a challenge if you go into, now I, unfortunately, I think it's just for uh, demonstrators. But there is a challenge right now uh, for demonstrators. They can download this actual drawing and color it and submit it for a chance to win a gift certificate from Stampin' Up! So that's kind of fun. And if you would like to start uh, receiving Paper Pumpkin, you have until the 10th of May to uh, receive, to subscribe to uh, the May Paper Pumpkin. Now, just a little heads up, on May 2nd, the prices of a few things are going up and Paper Pumpkin is one of them. So I typically get mine, I get billed once a month on the 11th of each month uh, for my Paper Pumpkin. But I think because of the price increase, I'm actually going to purchase my entire year ahead and I save, I think you basically work out to get one Paper Pumpkin free. I'd have to look up the actual numbers, but I know there's a significant saving. So I'm actually going to do that before the 10th of, well, actually before the 2nd of May, because May 2nd, the prices are going to go up. So that's something, something to think about. If you think that you would like to have a monthly subscription kit, um, you know, definitely think about, it's, it's a bit of an outlay at first, but you do save money in the long run and it saves you, you'll be buying this year's prices, not starting um, the new year prices on May 2nd. So give it some thought. And in this paper pumpkin this month, there is a free little organizer that you can put together to store all sorts of different things. And if you go on to Facebook, if you're a paper uh, pumpkin subscriber, you can go on to the Facebook um, paper pumpkin fan club page and you'll see how different people have um, organized their little blocks differently. Like you, you don't have to have this exact layout. You can do uh, various layouts with your, um, with your little inserts and they fit into a paper pumpkin box. So yeah, have a look at that. It's pretty neat. And there's a QR code that you can actually um, scan and it will take you to a site and shows you the different layouts that you can consider um, when you get this. <coughs> Now, if you subscribe to May's Paper Pumpkin and you're not currently a subscriber, you won't be getting this. This is strictly the April um, Paper Pumpkin freebie. So our stamps for this month are really pretty. For With deepest sympathy, enjoy your day. I'm grateful for all the little things you do. Celebrate today. And then it's got some spots. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you've got some spots, a little twiggy thing, and, and a flower. So it pretty well covers a lot of what you'd ever need a card for. So this is a great, uh, great one. 
Let's zip back out of here. There we go. Oops, I'm just gonna turn my camera that's facing the wrong way. There. <clears throat> that's better. It's funny I didn't notice that when I was showing you the picture there. Okay, so let's just pop this aside. And let's open up our kit. I love the colors. I haven't even done last month's paper pumpkin yet, to be honest. <clears throat> oh, my allergies are in full boom tape. Starting to eat bananas. So in here we have um, coral, calypso coral twine. Sorry, my window is wide open here. I got a big glare. And some basic black twine. And in this little bag, we have some gems. And dimensionals. Oh, look at these. One, so we have three, three of these. And these punch out. So you know me, whenever I see a punch out thing, I immediately go to shaker cards. So we'll see, maybe I'll make a shaker card. So we have three of these. We have three card bases in the shaded spruce. And we have three in, this looks like petal pink to me. So three in the petal pink and three in just plain white. And we've got some, um, not banners, what do you call these? Um, for sentiments. Good grief, I'm telling you. See, three weeks and I can't even talk. So we've got some things for our sentiments. We've also got some uh, other labels here. Labels, see, I'm telling you. And then these little coral kind of elements here and one two three sheets of these florals these are beautiful and three of these little balmy blue little sheets they probably go on the basic white here and then we have three little punch outs of florals for in the Calypso Coral. And we have some glue dots and our instructions. All right, oh, and we have envelopes. So all of the envelopes are the same. So we should have nine, right? Three, six, nine. So we have nine balmy blue envelopes. These are very pretty. I might have to use one of these as a background for our, our stamp, our um, cards. All right, so let's get organized here. So if you haven't subscribed to Paper Pumpkin and you're looking to do that, I will have the link on my in the description of the video. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at curtisinink.com and uh, I can help you uh, subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. I'm trying to do a reorg in my office and I'm telling you, I'm just, I don't know if I'm just not focused or what, but it's taking 10 times longer than it probably should. <laughs> so there's stuff everywhere. All right, let's look at this. Um, okay. So our bottom part of the sheet here shows us what we need for card number one. So for card number one, we need uh, one of the petal pink card bases and one of the punch out floral thingies and one of these and the round cornered 
a sentiment banner and some twine. All right, so let's see. Got the twine and we need I'm grateful for all the little things you do. All right, so I'm gonna pop that on a lock. Now, if you, if you, when you receive your first paper pumpkin, you will receive one of these little paper pumpkin blocks. So it's, it's not as big as our ergonomic blocks, which are larger and they have like a finger grab place. The ergonomic blocks are fabulous but this will come your first paper pumpkin comes with one of these blocks and they work just fine now if you do purchase the all-inclusive kits on the online exclusive store then each kit does come with a block so you if you're a kit person you can actually develop quite a quite a inventory of blocks to, for your stamping because I, I use multiple blocks whenever I'm working. I might have three or four blocks on the go at any given time. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my uh, stamp a little clean because in the manufacturing process there might be a little bit of something on there. I don't know if there is or not but I just wonder. And um, so the first thing we should do perhaps is stamp our sentiment. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna line that up. Okay, I'm grateful for all the little things you do. And So let's go to card number one. Okay, so we've stamped our, now this one was a little bit wet from when I put it into the uh, chamois, but you know what, I'm going to live with this for now. No, I'm not, I gotta flip it over. <laughs> I just, uh, that would drive me nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo it. That's better. That's way better. Just clean that. All right, so we have our card base and this is the petal pink. Gonna burnish it with a bone folder and it says here we need 22 inches of twine so there's always a ruler on your kit at some point so let's grab 22 inches so I got 11 and 11 And let's see, so let's punch out all of our little punch outs. My husband's made um, split pea soup today. Oh, if you could smell the wonderful odor coming from, it's not an odor, fragrance coming from our kitchen. It just smells amazing. And he's doing lamb shank for dinner. Pretty excited about that. It's funny, I never used to like lamb. And uh, it's just since my husband started cooking it that I, I like it. Anytime I've ever had it at a restaurant or something, I really, I didn't like it at all. But uh, when he does it, I think he, last time he did it in the um, Instant Pot. And it was so good. Really, really delicious. 
Okay, so let's see. We need dimensionals, and it tells you right in your instructions where to put your dimensionals, okay? So let me zoom back to there, okay. So it actually tells you exactly where to put your dimensionals. Now, I'm gonna put a few more because I don't like saggy um, paperwork or whatever you call it. I like mine to be a little bit more um, sturdy, I guess is the right word. So I'm gonna throw a few more on there. There. Okay, and so we can go ahead and pop that right on there. All right. So the leaves are going up. So I'm gonna center that right there. Oh, just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it, I love it. Okay, so I need some glue dots. I'm gonna put some glue dots all on the right side. It says on the right side, watch your notes. I almost put them on the wrong side. All right, so we need three of those. And then on our sentiment, we need three uh, dimensionals. Now it looks like I've got the dimensionals on the wrong side, but don't forget that I flipped it over and re-stamped it, right? Okay, I'll take this off. my twine here we are so I'm just going to make a circle of twine maybe a little bit bigger And then we're just going to stick this right on here, like this. Oh, nope. Okay, I want it on both sides, so let's see. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that. All right, so where's our blingy bling? And they're putting five uh, little blingies on there. And so they have a large one over here. I find the large ones are pretty large. I may not. I'm not going to put my bling where they have their bling for the most part. And I'm only going to use three. That way they'll go further. Isn't that pretty? Gee, that is so cute. Okay, that was card number one. That was pretty darn easy. All right, so card number two. Let's see, what does it say we need for card number two? We need a green shaded spruce base. 
one of our large rectangles. Um, a petal pink circle. And one of these little lacy business here. And a floral element. Oh, I just love these. And three little ones. Okay, so one, two, three. And I'm going to take my uh, chipboard that came with it and I'm going to use that as my stamping background. So let's see where are my stamps. So um, what else do I need? So we need enjoy the day. Enjoy your day. And the polka dots. I'm just gonna grab another block since I have them handy. So this is the D size block. This is the same size as the one that you get with your first paper pumpkin. I could use a smaller one. And I am going to use a smaller one for my sentiment. And I'm just gonna give them both a quick clean before I use them. Did I clean that one after I used it? I think I did, but. Okay, so let's see. Is that all we need? Looks like it. Oh, no, I need some orange twine as well. So card number two. 18 inches, it says. Oh, it's the black twine in this one. 18 inches of the black. All right, so here we have this ready and this ready. And 18 inches, so let's see. So we will go nine and nine. And let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is stamp, uh, oop, stamp our sentiment onto the petal pink circle. So there's that. And then we're going to stamp our rectangle with these little dots all over the place. I think that's it for stamping, right? Yep. All right, so we'll put this away. Just give these a quick clean so I don't transfer ink onto anything. All right. Except my hands, I'm covered. I always keep a wet wipe handy because I always have inky fingers. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take three of our, I'm just gonna pop a light on, it's getting awfully dark. The clouds are rolling in. I'm going to put three glue dots on our rectangle here. I 
I should have taken an allergy pill today. Holy dino, my face is itchy. I'm coughing. But I'm not complaining because it means spring is here. Everything's in bloom. We have daffodils all over the place. It's great. All right, so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to end in the middle. Oop. So I'm going to go from the middle on the back to this corner and then I'm going to cross over. Grab that glue, glue stick, <laughs> glue dot, and then I'm going to go straight over to this corner and then cross over and then land back in the middle. Now, if you want to put more glue dots, I don't see why you couldn't. There we have that. And it looks like we're just going to glue that right onto there. And I'm gonna pop a few more glue dots because I don't think that that's sufficient. Now, if you have liquid glue, you know what? Use your liquid glue if that's your preference. Um, if I wasn't doing a video and I was just doing these to do, I probably would just use my liquid glue because it's there. I mean, these are very convenient and everything. There's no reason why you, you couldn't use whatever you have though, or even a tape runner. But that's the beauty of these kits. They're all inclusive. So they have your adhesive, they have um, anything you need. The only thing you really need is a bone folder and a pair of scissors. And you don't even need a bone folder, you can use your nails, you know. All right, so they've got this at the bottom of the card, like this. And then we're going to put dimensionals on the back of our floral. one on the back of the sky, and then one on the back of each of these little flowers. We got one, two, three. This is adorable. Okay, so this is gonna go <clears throat> on an angle like this. And then they have one flower here. And one here. And then the third one is here, it looks like. They have it here, but I'm gonna put it here. All right, and then this has, they just have a glue dot on the back of this. Now, of course, this is just the way they um, decided how they wanna do it. The world is your oyster, you can Literally do whatever you want. They have theirs going over like this. If I was gonna do that, I would probably put a dimensional on it. I'm gonna go under. Just stick that there. And then because this is on dimensionals, I'm not sure that having that little thing on a dimensional, that's an awful lot of dimension. And then the more you put on your um, card and the bigger the higher it is you could get hit with more postage so you kind of don't want to go there I'm just going to move this to the bottom I should have looked to where I was putting it let's grab another one 
So I want it on the bottom. So there's my bottom. There. So now, okay, great. So now it's not interfering with the other. <coughs> Excuse me, and now I need some bling. So what will we do? Let's see. I'm gonna pop one on right on that little flower. They have theirs scattered throughout the card. So again, you know, it's your card, do whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna put one on here. And maybe one over here. There, how cute. Oh, I love this. All right, so that's card number two. And of course you can put a sentiment in there if you want. Why not? Or you can just leave it as a note card. Um, it's whatever works for you. And then sometimes I often will leave the inside of my card without a sentiment and then I pick a sentiment that suits the person that it's going to. I got my friend Doreen who you've seen in some of my videos. I would choose a different sentiment for her than I would for say my sister or something like that. So, um, you know, just that's what I do. All right, so for card number three, what do we need? Card number three. Okay, good. I thought I was losing my marbles, but, but I'm not. <laughs> so here it says, this is what we need. It says card number one, card number two, and card number one. So it's obviously card number three. So let's see, what do we need? We need a white card base. And we need one of those little blue uh, panels and these big flowers. These are gorgeous. When I first saw this kit, I thought, oh, you know, not loving that whole big flower thing, but they are beautiful. Okay, so let's see, what are we doing? Oh, and we also need one of these little flagged banners and this is going to be a sympathy card so I'm going to swap out um, with deepest sympathy and you'll notice I know I sound like a broken broken record but if you haven't seen my videos before and you're wondering why I put my uh, sentiments on an angle it's so that when I'm stamping I don't have to I don't have to challenge my brain and compete with the edge of the block I just focus on the stamp itself and then I'm good to go I find that if I'm trying to line it up with the edge of the block and it's off I can't stamp straight to save my life so this is the way I do it and again it's personal choice you can you know if that doesn't work for you or you like to do it the other way that's great all right, so I'm just wanna, I'm gonna go to card number three and just make sure that we're on the same page here. Ha <laughs> ha, same page. <laughs> oh God, I killed myself. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna stamp. Oh, I didn't clean this one, so let's just test stamp it and see. I think we're okay. And that's our, so you see how straight that is? I couldn't do that if my stamp was straight on the block. I, it just wouldn't work for me. So that's how my little brain works. So I have to do it on an angle. And I, I learned this from another demonstrator who is similarly challenged because um, I was wondering, how, how do people get this so straight? And then this one demonstrator, she's an American and I honestly can't remember who it was. And she said, I can't stamp straight if my sentiment isn't on an angle. So I thought, well, I'll try that. Sure enough, reverse like a charm. So now I'm going to take the little dots and I'm just going to stamp on my panel here. So I got one up here. And they have one in the corner. 
And again, this is your card. You can do whatever you like. If you want to go all over it, certainly you can do that. But I always do my first ones the way they have them in the instructions. And then that way I get a feel for the kit. And uh, I can... Uh, my brain starts to go, you know? All right, so we need 12 inches of the twine. So I got 12. And let's see, so we're going to, this is going to go on our card base. So let's fold up our card base. I think I'm done with the stamping. This is a horizontal card. All right, so we're gonna put some um, glue dots on this and stick it to our base. And again, if I was just doing this like on my own, I'd probably be just using liquid glue because it's faster. I'm all about get her done. But when I'm, if I'm traveling or I'm going to visit my grandkids and I can craft at night when they're in bed or while they're at daycare, then I can, I just bring the kit and I have everything I need right in there. All right, so I'm gonna pop this on here, centered. And now on the large one, I'm going to put glue dots. And then on the smaller one, I'm gonna put uh, dimensionals. <clears throat> so, glue dot, glue dot, and then dimensionals. Can you hear Georgie banging on the door? She's not happy. I shut the door. <laughs> she comes in here and she starts pounding. Like, she jumps on my desk and she'll hit the keyboard and stop my video. <laughs> she's a real pain. <laughs> Good thing she's cute. All right, so let's flip this over. Let's get our... bottom things off here there we go okay so they have it like this and it's kind of overhanging like that okay now what they've done is they've taken the smaller flower which is an exact replica of this flower and they've laid it right on top with the dimensionals so that it's popped up Oh my God, come on. There, there we go. Isn't that cute? So it's the same flower, it's just popped up. And now we've got our sentiment here. Cat hair on everything. And, oh, I forgot my twine. So I've got my twine here. And it looks like they just have a big bow there. So let's put a bow. doesn't look like theirs does. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to grab that with a dimensional. Pop that on there. All right. And a little bit of bling. So 
So let's see, what have they done with their bling? So it's just random on the card. Okay, so I'm gonna pop one over here. One down here. And one here. And that's card number three. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love these. I honestly didn't think I was gonna like this, and I really, I do, I really like it. So next, if you look on the back of the sheet, there's always a couple of alternatives. So here's one, if you can see that very well, uh, we're using the petal pink background and then the larger flower. So why don't we try that one? So let me check my focus here yet again. Here we go, okay. So let's grab one of those. And you know, um, in the past I've done some pretty elaborate alternatives, but it doesn't need to be. They don't need to be elaborate. They just need to be fun. And you don't even have to do alternatives. Just do whatever you like. So let's grab one of those florals in my pile. Here we are. Oh, you know what they've done? They've taken, let me grab the balmy blue ink. Okay, so I've got the balmy blue. And they are using the little Spriggy floral here. So let me just clean off this. Put that one on there. And let's see, what have they done? So they've just put a few sprigs in the blue around the card. So I did some stamping off, let's just see. could do is cut this so that you have two sprigs you could cut it right here fussy cut it and just have one you know what let's do that why not so let's just I'm gonna cut this out here So there's one, and I'm just gonna go inside here a little. So there's one. Now you could go all the way around and make your outline just a little bit finer if you wanted to. I'm not going to, but you could. So here, I'm just making it sort of spread around a little bit. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to glue this one down and then pop this one up on dimensionals. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So let's put this one on dimensionals first. And you know what? Sometimes they don't turn out the way you think you'd like them to, and who cares? It's an experiment. It's only paper. 
And more often than not, like sometimes I've done things and I think, oh, I didn't love that, you know. But um, then I look at it and I think, that's not bad. So actually I'm looking at this and it looks like what they've done is they've cut the top. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. We're going to take our card base. I should have opened this before so that I could give this some serious thought, but oh well, that's okay. So I want this to be four by five and a quarter. So let's go four. By five and a quarter. And then I'm going to take now I did, I knew, I looked up what the corresponding colors were and I picked out some card bases. So one of the ones that I do have here is, what did I do with them all? So I picked out one of each color and I'm going to use, well, you know what, let's use that one. So we're gonna use the, the Calypso Coral. <coughs> Excuse me. This is how I roll. <laughs> I fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Seriously. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap some, I'm just gonna pop a glue, couple of glue dots on the back. Cat hair in my eye. Pop some glue dots on the back here. Bottom is there. So probably in like the bottom third or thereabouts. Just so that the twine can sort of grab onto something. All right, so I'm just gonna go around a couple times. in that other glue dot. Trim off my little tail there. And I think at this point, you know what, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm just gonna go to my liquid glue, maybe. It's been sitting for a while too. I might have to grab a new one. All right, so I've got my liquid glue. That was a disaster. I'm not usually so heavy handed with my glue, but it kind of came out because I had a blob. There, okay. So let's place this without the blob. In the center of my card base. So that's Calypso Coral. And then I'm going to, let's see. Yes, okay, so I'm gonna glue this one down. This is on dimensional, so it's going to go here. That's cute. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go lower. They have it lower in the picture, and I kind of actually really like that. So I'm just gonna go lower with this one, kind of like this. Can you hear the cat? Oh my god. You swear somebody was murdering her out there. Oh boy, oh boy. She's so neglected, you know. <laughs> there. I'm going to try and shift that a little bit. There we go. Okay. So, over 
Um, now I need a little piece of balmy blue, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just chop a little piece off the bottom of this. Maybe a oh, half an inch. And then I'm going to take one of those sentiment uh, little things. And what did they stamp on theirs? They put celebrate today. We haven't used that one yet, so let's use that one. And my stamps. This is what a mess. <laughs> oh, jeez. Celebrate today. Yikes. Okay. What a mess celebrate today and I'm going to do that in the balmy blue beautiful and I'm just going to do it off to one side because I'm going to cut the other side off so celebrate today and then I'm just going to cut this off on an angle like that And I'm going to pop this behind here. Like that. And we'll pop these up on dimensionals. Pop this dimensional up here. And then this will sit on top of the already raised floral. Like that. You know what? I'm going to curve the bottom to match. There. Yeah, I like that better. So then I'm going to pop this up like this. Okay, and then we're going to put a few little gems around. This desk is a disaster. <laughs> oh well, c'est la vie. All right, so that one's going to go over here. This one's going to come over here. And let's see, where will we put this one? So there's an alternative. Isn't that cute? And then on the inside, you could take a piece of basic white that is four by five and a quarter. And again, I would sort of stick with the theme and I'm going to use the same little branch that we used on the front. So I'm just gonna pop that on like this. Okay, so I'm going to just pop, so all I did was I put two little florals there. Sorry, my husband just popped his head in. And I'm going to pop this right there. And then again, you can put a sentiment or you can leave it until you need a, you know, a sentiment. You can choose which kind of sentiment per whatever person you're doing. So that's our first alternative. Okay, so for the second alternative, I saw this one on 
I believe it was a demonstrator site. I'm not 100% sure. So, so um, what she did was, her name is Laura Sakai. I think that's how you spell, say that. Sorry if I'm wrong. Um, and she did a reverse Z fold. So what she did was she took um, one of these card bases with the uh, shaded spruce on it and she folded it inside out and then back on itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this. And it's five and a half, so two and three quarters is half of five. And a half. So I'm going to score this at two and three quarters only because I want it to have a nice um, fold in it. So two and three quarters. My scoring blade fell off and it's under my desk somewhere. All right, so at two and three quarters, I'm going to fold that over, make sure that it's square. And burnish that really well. So now we have like a Z fold, okay? And then I'm going to take one of these flowers. And I'm going to put that here. Oh my God. Can you hear that cat? If she had her claws out, she'd be digging right through that door. Good grief. And, uh, <laughs> she's driving me crazy. <laughs> so she had this, now I'm trying to think of exactly what she did. I don't remember. No, I think she just took the big one. Let me think about it. I actually don't know. Okay, so she, okay. All right, so she folded, she did a reverse fold here. And then she took the bigger of the florals and glued it to the front here. Very clever, actually. So I'm just going to center that right in my card. And I only put glue just on the one half of this. So I have... Isn't that pretty? Beautiful. All right, so then um, I'm going to take... one of these now how did she do that i think she stuck this to here okay so i've got a little piece of uh, petal pink and let me grab my shaded spruce and i'm going to use the happy birthday from pansy patch I think now I'm delighted that this is carrying over I didn't use it much last year but I'm certainly going to use it uh, this year coming so happy birthday oh just stuck my thumb right in there I always keep a wet handy wipe because I'm forever, ever sticking my fingers in the ink. All right, so get all that off of there. Okay, so let's see. I grabbed the Stylish Shapes dies because they're very versatile. And let's see which one of these will fit. Well, that one won't, but this one will. All right, so let me grab my little cut and emboss machine right here. Now this little blue mini cutter is a limited edition and it's actually going to be uh, part of the online exclusives 
as of May 2nd. So if you would like to get your hands on one of these, I believe they're $87 Canadian. And if you are uh, become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator between now and May 2nd, you can also get your uh, demonstrator discount. So, just food for thought. All right, so let's see here. All right, let's see. Oh, that's cute. Okay. So, let me see. How are we going to do this? That's adorable. Okay, so I'm going to glue this to here. In the center. No, actually, I think I'm going to push it over to the edge. And then... I can glue this to here. Or do I want to do that? This was how Laura did hers, I think. She had it so that it opened when this opened. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I'm just going to put a bit of glue here. And I'm going to lay that right in there make sure it's straight and I think I'm gonna put a little dab of glue right under the petal here so that it lifts when when this lifts There. Oh, that is so cute. I love this. Very, very cute. So I have to rethink this because, unless I put a fold in it. There. That's better. Okay, so what I did was I just folded it right here. And now it just stays with that, that little burnish here. There. That's better. That is so stinking cute. I really like that. Okay, let's pop a few little gems on there. And that'll be another alternative. Put one there. Put a big one here to reflect some of the light. Very, very cute. And so you could put a sentiment in the middle here if you wanted to, um, just to finish it off, like on the inside. Or, and, not or, and, you could take that little floral that we had as well and pop that with the shaded spruce. I hope I clean this because it had blue on it. right in here. And that's going to be covered up by the fold. But it finishes the inside, don't you think? Isn't that cute? So there's our other alternative. So I'm just gonna do two alternatives for today. I'm going to play around with a few more and I probably will end up doing a um, shaker card out of the punched out piece but I want to play with it first and um, my husband's been tapping on the door dinner's ready dinner's ready so I gotta go but let me show you what I've made so far so let's get rid of some of this there we go so here are the two alternatives that we made so we did one where we just cut this in half and put part of it on dimensionals. 
very very cute and then this one that we just finished with the the reverse uh, Z fold I don't I guess it's not a reverse really but except that we folded the card inside out to get started with and that was from Laura Satai and then this this is the one from the kit these are really growing on me they're beautiful and this was also one of the original ones from the kit and this one aren't they beautiful lovely so don't forget if you're interested in taking advantage of the this year's pricing on uh, paper pumpkin you have until uh, May 1st because on May the 2nd the prices are changing and uh, if you have any questions about becoming a demonstrator ordering any of the um, products uh, from my store or uh, subscribing to paper pumpkin feel free to get in touch with me at critters and ink at gmail.com and if you do decide to go ahead and purchase a full year's worth of paper pumpkin if I could ask you to use my uh, April host code I really would appreciate it I can only take orders from Canadians and um, but when people use my host code it allows me to purchase uh, the things that I send as free gifts so um, I really appreciate that it really helps with me and then if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel if you're not already a YouTube subscriber to Critters and Ink uh, that would be awesome and don't forget to hit the like button thanks so much have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon bye for now